Good afternoon, everybody. Thank God for another day among the land of the living. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the plan of salvation. Wanted to do a quick video in response to a message I got yesterday from an atheist. And is God real? Is the Bible real? Um, is Jesus real? You know, so... I wanted to do this video just to give my thoughts on that and a couple things that really um, let me know, yes, this thing is real. God is real. It's not a fairy tale. Jesus is real. Um, you know, when you look at creation, when you look around you, you either have to say that there was a creator who created everything, which is exactly what the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth it goes on to tell you everything that he created the you know the 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 whole universe the um, the stars the moon the sun and you know humanity the animals um the mountains the seas just everything when you look at creation you have to say this there's either a creator that created everything or you have to believe in the scientific impossibility that everything came from nothing. It's one or the other. Either there's a creator who created everything or you have to believe in the scientific impossibility that everything came from nothing. So that's your two options. And I think, you know, I believe it's, it's obvious that God created everything. There is a creator. Uh, whether you want to say, now I believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is the bloodline that our Lord and Savior came through. And um, that's the one and true living God, the God of the Bible. But having said that, my point is this. Even if you say there's a different God, you gotta you have to come to the conclusion that either everything was created by a creator, a God, or it all came from nothing. And so I believe it takes more faith to believe that everything came from nothing than it does to believe that a creator created it. And most people will tell you, yeah, when you think about it, it's obvious that everything had to have been created, you know. So I believe that's the number one, what, one of the ways I know God exists. Number two, Bible prophecy. We serve a God that tells us what's going to happen before it happens. 25 to 30 percent of the Bible is prophetic. God has told us everything in advance that would take place that we need to know about. Um, you know, the Bible prophesied that Jesus would come. The Old Testament prophesied that he would come, how he would come, and that was all fulfilled. It's a proven fact that Jesus came into the world. It's a proven fact that he died and he resurrected. It's a proven fact. So the Bible prophesies that he, he it prophesied in the Old Testament that he would come in the future, the first time, which he did, and he died for the sins of all humanity. And it also prophesies that he's going to come a second time. He's coming again. And he's going to rule and reign um, for a thousand years, but for all eternity. It's an everlasting kingdom. So when you look at Bible prophecy, pay attention to the nation of Israel. We can see things that are getting ready to happen now. God has an everlasting covenant with the nation of Israel and, and with the body of Christ. His the born-again believers, children of God. And... God has told us that um, the Word of God tells us that Jesus will return again. And it tells us what's going to happen before he comes. It tells us when he's going to come. But when you pay attention to the nation of Israel, um, they were destroyed by the Romans, the Roman church, or the, the Roman Empire in 70 AD. And they were dispersed all over the land. God prophesied that they would come back to their land. If you read Ezekiel, it's all in the through the Bible in the Old Testament, but when you read Ezekiel 36, 37, 38, and 39, it tells you what's going to happen at the end of days before Jesus returns. And 
it says this. It said that the nation of Israel would come back to their land, which they did in 1948. After being dispersed in 70 AD, the temple was burnt down, Jerusalem was burnt down, and the nation of Israel, they were dispersed all over the land. And they came back, just like the Bible says. Read Ezekiel 36, 37. It talks about how the nation of Israel as a people would come back to their land, which they're back in their land since 1948. It talks about how the land would be prosperous again in agriculture, natural resources. Um, the animals would walk upon the land again. And if you look at history... When Israel, when the nation of Israel was kicked out of their land, it became just desert. It was dry desert. You couldn't grow any crops. You couldn't live there. You could not live there. And when the nation of Israel came back to their land in 1948, it began to prosper. And Ezekiel 36, exactly like it says would happen, the only nation to be kicked out of their land, and it happened twice, they went to Babylon, and it was all due to not being obedient to their father. Um, God made a promise to them that if they would follow him, he would be their God. And if they would listen to him and obey his commandments, um, he would be their God. And no nation, no, no nation would come up against them. But if they disobeyed and they began to serve other gods, then God would punish them. And that is exactly what happened. They were dispersed all over the land. But... They came back to their land in 1948, the only nation that has ever happened to. And so, when we look at what's going on right now with the nation of Israel, they've been back in the land since 1948. The Bible says, pay attention to this, that they're going to begin to make um, animal sacrifices again. There's going to be a temple that's going to be rebuilt. Okay? Okay. There's going to be an Antichrist that comes into the picture. But before all these different things, you know, Antichrist will come into the picture. Um, there's a final invasion that's going to be led by the Antichrist with those surrounding nations over there. And a red heifer is going to get, um, they're going to sacrifice a red heifer. And they're going to begin to make animal sacrifices again. So just if you watch the nation of Israel... They're back in the land just like God said they would be. Ezekiel 36, 37, 38, 39 tells us about this. They're back in the land. They're prosperous. Um, natural resources, uh, um, energy, agriculture. You know, a lot of things are taking place in the nation of Israel. But they had to be back in the land for, for end time prophetic events to take place. Um, you know... They're gonna have. They're gonna burn a red heifer. There's only been nine red heifers since the nation of Israel has existed, and they believe that the tenth red heifer that comes, the hef, red heifer has to be perfect. And when they burn this, they believe that the tenth red heifer that um, they sacrifice is going to. Um, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's going to bring usher in the Messiah. They believe when that 10th red heifer comes that Jesus Christ, that's going to be what happens and then it's going to usher in the Messiah. So red heifer is going to get burned. Pay attention to Israel. Uh, the temple is going to be rebuilt. They're going to begin to make twice daily animal sacrifices again. And um, the Antichrist is going to come. And invade. There's going to be an invasion on the nation of Israel by all of its surrounding nations around over there. Ezekiel 38 and 39 tells us about this final war that's going to be led by Gog, the Antichrist. And here's the thing. That invasion, when that invasion takes place, the Battle of Armageddon, that's the invasion that Jesus will come back and fight for the nation of Israel. So... I hope I'm not confusing you right now. But bottom line is this. I'll, I'll, I'll cut it short. Creation. There was either creator or everything came from nothing. And Bible prophecy. God tells us what's going to happen before it happens. If you read in the Old Testament, 
you'll find it's it's Bible history. It's about four thousand years of history, and it tells you, um, you know, about the nation of Israel and things that happened to them. And if you 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 read the prophecies on the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, you find out that they did happen, just like it says that would happen. And so, between those two things, um, you know, I believe it's it's a no-brainer that there is a God and there is a Creator. And a third thing that I'll just mention is this: when when a, a person uh, is born again and they become a child of God, they 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 put their faith and trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They are a changed person. God's Spirit comes and dwells on the inside. They're born again. God becomes their Heavenly Father, and they are changed. You know, they have peace. They have joy. They have happiness. They have love for people. Um, you know, you go from wanting to just enjoy life and the different pleasures of the world. You go from that to wanting to please God, wanting to make sure you're doing what's right in His eyes. And the Bible says, when you have God's nature in you, you have love. Um, God is love. And so you'll see the different fruit of Holy Spirit, which dwells in you. Love, joy, peace, happiness, long-suffering, patience. You'll see the different fruit manifest itself. And you're a changed person. So, you know, between creation, it's obviously it's obvious there was a creator that created everything. And Bible prophecy, we serve a God that tells us what's going to happen before it happens. And the change that takes place inside of a born-again believer when you're saved, when you're born again, when you repent to God, you turn to Him with all your heart, and you believe in the gospel message of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Sorry, uh, co-worker. Um, when you're born again, you become a changed person. That's the bottom line. And you are a, a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And your desire is to please God and seek God. And you have love one for another. So you, you become a completely different person when you're born again. Um, and you're a child of God. So, you know, God is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. The Bible's real. And one day we're going to live forever. We have a choice to make. We're all sinners. We're all lawbreakers in need of a Savior. And Jesus is the Savior of the world. He came. He died for the sins of all mankind. And he resurrected. He was buried, resurrected the third day. And because of that, because of that blood atoning sacrifice, our sins, can, we can be forgiven of our sins. And because of the resurrection, he defeated death, he defeated Satan, and we are promised that we will live forever in eternal glory with God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all the beautiful people of God that place their faith and trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Trust in Jesus to deliver you from wrath and trust in him to take you into eternal glory. That is the bottom line. Um, so I hope that helps uh, creation. It's obviously, it's obvious there's a creator. Um, Bible prophecy, God tells us what's going to happen before it happens, and he's batting a thousand. And we see things lining up right now, exactly like the Bible says would take place at the end of time before Jesus returns. And the born-again experience, when you become a child of God, you're a new creature in Christ, you're a changed person. All your, you know, all the things you used to want to do, you don't want to do them no more. You just want to please God and seek Him. And you'll you'll have, when His Spirit is in you, you'll be a different person. And you'll have love one for another. Um, and that is the bottom line. So, you know, we serve an awesome God. He is the um, Redeemer. And He has redeemed us. You know, He's purchased our souls with the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Um, he is the Son of God. He was God manifested in flesh. He came down, took upon him human flesh, lived a perfect life, died for the sins of all mankind, and was resurrected the third day. Put to death, resurrected the third day, and 
because of the finished work of the cross, we have an opportunity to um, be delivered from the punishment we deserve, hell like a fire, and instead gain the gift of everlasting life as a gift. It's a gift, and you have to receive the gift. And the way you can receive the gift is by um, repenting to God, believe the gospel, believe he is the Son of God, believe he died for your sins and resurrected the third day, and then place your faith and trust in him as your Lord and Savior. Trust in him to take you from death, you know, hell like a fire. Trust in him to deliver you from that everlasting punishment and trust in him to take you to eternal glory. Um, it's a promise to all that believe and trust in him as their Lord and Savior. So God bless you. All have a wonderful day. I hope that helped a little bit. Ray Comfort, Living Waters. It's an awesome app. I would binge watch those his his episodes. They're they're amazing, and you will learn a lot. So he has it's um, you know I do the best I can, but I would definitely recommend uh, Ray Comfort, Living Waters. Go watch his videos. Um, you know he's he's very good. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Uh, God is good. He's worthy to be praised.